right. Uh, so next up, we have Mark Phillips, who will be presenting for Helium. Uh, I apologize again for anybody who was actually expecting Amir Halim. He had to duck out at the last minute. He's our CEO. Uh, he had uh, family issues that uh, had to be resolved at the last minute, but he sends his best. And he uh, has been watching the, the proceedings for the last uh, few hours and will be on for the next couple of days. So uh, I am Mark Phillips. Uh, my email is markethelium.com. And uh, that's my, my uh, Twitter handle there, Fark Phillips. Uh, so um, for anybody who doesn't know, uh, uh, much about Helium. Uh, so we were founded in 2013 with a mission to uh, make it easier to, to build uh, ubiquitous decentralized wireless networks. Now, full disclosure, when we were founded in 2013, we did not have a blockchain component to our platform. And I will talk about how we, um, how we got there. Uh, but uh, our investors who have been wildly supportive uh, over the years are companies like uh, Union Square Ventures and Multicoin Capital, uh, both of whom were very active in the crypto space and who led our most recent round uh, last year in 2019. Uh, before that, we had the great group at First Mark Capital, uh, Google Ventures, uh, Munich Reinsurance, which is a strategic investor, uh, Coastal Ventures, and a few others. And I think we've raised about 54 million in pure equity financing to date. And so we founded along with uh, Sean Fanning of Napster fame. I actually think today is maybe the 20th anniversary of Napster, which is fairly crazy. So Sean Fanning, uh, Napster co-founder, was actually a Helium co-founder. Um, and so uh, he and Amir and a few other people in 2013 got together to sort of talk about uh, what they thought was missing in the world of IoT and connected devices, uh, particularly around uh, connectivity and connectivity networks. So um, you know, they had a few friends who were building these connected applications for uh, doing things like monitoring retail foot traffic in stores, for example. And they were sort of struggling with how to get device data from these sensors, uh, as crude as they were, back to the internet so people could actually make real meaning uh, out of the data. And so what they determined after looking at all this sort of um, uh, at the ecosystem for connectivity was that the, the current networks were entirely uh, inadequate. And so uh, starting, well, I guess it would be six years ago, uh, we set out to build a mission to sort of build a network, uh, a wireless network that caters to what we think are the sort of demands of uh, what these these devices and sensors are. Uh, so if anybody has ever worked with hardware or built anything that could you know, generally be called IoT or end of things, uh, we feel that in order for the, the sort of um, future to be realized for these tens of billions and hundreds of billions of devices that the sort of Cisco's and the McKinsey's of the world are projecting, uh, you need to be able to do things like put a device in the year or rather in the, in the field with years of battery life. Uh, you need to you know, be looking at something that has a very, very, very small form factor. So um, you know, over the years, we've learned that enterprises are just looking to generally get their sensors smaller and smaller. Um, you need to be able to do things like location tracking without relying on cellular networks. So uh, Helium as a network is generally being used for a lot of different use cases, uh, many of which are, are location related. And so Helium, as I'll talk about, is an alternative to cellular uh, communication. And so doing location tracking without cellular backhaul is a huge advantage of, uh, of Helium and what we think the networks of the future need. Um, you need miles of range so you know if you are let's say for example building a uh, an application that monitors the status of growing operations on a farm uh, you want to be able to put a sensor in the middle of a of a, of a 50,000 acre farm and not have to worry about range to a network uh, you want non-proprietary technology so everything i talk about today is going to be uh, primarily free and open source under very friendly licensing uh, and it really you know ties into the decentralized piece of what helium build is building and obviously uh, most people here at this conference understand the sort of importance of things being decentralized and then open um, and then you want security at sort of all layers of what uh, of what you're building and Helium has this built into the platform. And so uh, over the years, although we started as a company that was just catering to enterprises, building uh, connected devices, uh, we, uh, we evolved into something that was uh, built on an incentive. So this is where the sort of blockchain component comes in. So Helium had been relatively successful since starting on this mission in 2013. And through the years, we, uh, we had done hundreds if not thousands of pilots with very large companies who are generally building connected devices. So this is something like a temperature monitor that goes in the refrigerator of say a sushi sushi fridge, right? Uh, sometimes uh, restaurants will put a quarter million dollars worth of sushi uh, in a single refrigerator and they need to monitor the temperature and, uh, and the, the sort of status of this thing. Uh, and so we had done all these pilots 
with these huge companies uh, and they had found the platform successful. And so generally on the Helium platform, you've got a sensor uh, which is built using uh, you know, a microprocessor and some logic that captures data, say from a refrigerator and then sends it back over a certain wireless link. Um, Helium has used different ones through the years, but now we use something called LoRaWAN and I'll get to that in a second. Um, and so we could help companies get up and running, but the biggest problem was that uh, nobody wanted to be in the business of building out networks. They wanted to be in the business of solving their own problems or selling something to a customer who had to solve a problem. But when it came to building a network, uh, the deployments tended to fizzle, and you know, rightfully so. If you're a Fortune 500 sort of enterprise or a Fortune 500 consumer products company, that is not specifically sort of chartered to build networks. And what are you in the business of building networks for? You shouldn't be. So uh, about two years ago, the executive team, the whole engineering team went back to the drawing board and said, how do we get back to this mission uh, of building this ubiquitous decentralized wireless network? And uh, somebody, actually an engineer on our team named Andrew, who goes by Bones, uh, jokingly said, well, maybe we should just build a, uh, a gateway, you know, a wireless gateway that also has a blockchain. Maybe we can sort of incentivize people to build this network out on behalf of us and on behalf of our customers. And so maybe this happened at uh, you know the companies of other people watching. Um, we joked about it. There's a joke white paper. <laughs> maybe maybe one day we'll sort of release this thing. Uh, and then we wrote this white paper. You know, we started to say, well, could we use the Bitcoin blockchain for this? Could we use something brand new? So we decided to write something from scratch, which is certainly a a, a perilous endeavor when it comes to building a blockchain. We wrote something called the Helium blockchain and with it, a new cryptocurrency called the Helium Token, or HMT. And so we use this uh, to incentivize the build out of a network, which we call the People's Network. And so uh, this has, and I'll get to some statistics in, in a second, enabled us to build uh, what is the largest public low power wide area network, sometimes called LP WAN. So the largest public, simply IoT network in the country in just about eight short months <clears throat> after launching uh, what was the first version of our hardware, something called the Helium Hotspot back in uh, April or rather August of last year. So uh, I think once this animation starts cooperating, I will have a picture of the hotspot here. So this is the hotspot. The people, or at least a few people watching this didn't own a hotspot, for example. Uh, we uh, started selling these in, I think, January, uh, maybe March of last year for delivery, <clears throat> roughly uh, in, uh, or, sorry, we started in May, uh, pre-sale for delivery in October, and we picked actually Austin, Texas as our first launch city. And so uh, we picked Austin, Texas for a lot of reasons, one of which was because uh, the community down there is very you know, tech savvy and tech forward and sort of bleeding edge. And they also have a lot of uh, crypto enthusiasts down there. And so um, the hotspot is a combination wireless access point. Uh, specifically, it creates a long range, low power network for something called LoRaWAN. Uh, so LoRaWAN, for anybody who pays attention to Internet of Things, is an increasingly adopted standard for uh, sending data over long ranges. It's an alternative to something like cellular or Wi-Fi. Um, you know, it gets much more range, you know, orders of magnitude more range than Wi-Fi, for example. Um, in terms of precise range, something like a Helium hotspot uh, or the Helium hotspot specifically can, can generate, in some cases, 25, 30, you know, 40 square miles worth of range and you know what you're looking at on my screen is actually just smaller than what the actual true size is it's about six inches by six inches square uh about a an inch thick and uh, has about a i don't know eight inch tall antenna that sort of sits out the back it's obviously a very consumer friendly device we built it that way um, and we market this to uh, people who want to build the network and so when it comes to the building side when you're running a helium hotspot you're not only routing data for devices and sensors but you're also and, and more importantly for this crowd um, you are a full uh, mining participant on the helium network so this runs the helium blockchain uh, on a very very small processor the whole thing is built on a, a raspberry pi 3b plus it's just a dual core uh, arm processor and um, it's got i don't know four gigs of ram and uh, 64 gigs worth of storage. It's very, very underwhelming. Uh, and so, uh, you know, we built this and we built the Helium blockchain specifically to be able to run on top of this and incentivize people to sort of be on the network. So um, when you're running the Helium blockchain or rather the Helium hotspot, uh, all the management and the provisioning of the hotspot uh, 
as a, as a network sort of operator is from the Helium app. So you can go to the iOS or Android store, you can search for Helium Hotspot app and you can download this. And so what you're seeing here are, are two of the five or six different UIs that we have. Um, on the left here, you've got the token. So in this particular account, you've got somebody with 2,781 Helium tokens. Uh, you can send and you can receive obviously from the app. And then we also show you all your mining rewards, uh, which I'll talk about in a second. And then on the right, we've got a specific hotspot here. This one's name is a uh, rural khaki deer. So we actually, uh, we programmatically generate the names of these hotspots based on the public key of the, of the wallet address of the hotspot. And uh, it is, a, it's been quite a huge hit. So uh, if you have a hotspot, you definitely know the name of it. Um, and you know, if you're ev part of the Helium community, if you're in our Slack, which is just chat.helium.com, you know, people are constantly talking about the names of their hotspots, how much they love them. Sometimes they don't like them, uh, but it's, it's been quite a nice little bonus. So this is the, the Helium wallet app. Um, in terms of the Helium blockchain and the sort of work that we've devised to produce the Helium token. So uh, the system that we've devised, and I'm sorry if the, this is not the best uh, image, uh, is something called proof of coverage. So uh, you know, back to uh, earlier in the presentation, I was talking about how we thought about using the Bitcoin blockchain uh, and, and different ones. Uh, but ultimately what we needed was a, a unit of work that uh, was useful to both the network participants on the supply side. So in this case, it's the hotspot operator supplying the network. And then on the, the demand side, which are the sort of enterprises, uh, companies like Nestle, for example, that use the Helium network as an alternative to uh, cellular networks to send data. And so we landed on something called proof of coverage. So uh, I'll, I'll not spend too much time here on proof of coverage. Um, in the presentation anyways, but if you go to developer.helium.com, uh, you can read more about how it works. But essentially what we've devised is a system where physical entities, in this case, the Helium hotspot, uh, are actually able to prove their, uh, their physical location in space and time using uh, something called proof of coverage. And specifically uh, under the sort of proof of coverage umbrella, we have something called a challenge. So here, uh, and this is actually, I think, from our network uh, explorer, which is just network.helium.com. Uh, we have a proof of coverage challenge. And so generally how it works is one hotspot somewhere, anywhere in the world on the network will construct a proof of coverage challenge, which basically says, uh, I want hotspots one through N to prove that they're actually um, providing coverage. And so the first hotspot in the chain, in this case, it's proper Sable Otter, we'll get a message over the internet uh, that says, hey, uh, you know, here's a packet you have to decrypt, decrypt it using the things that only you know about, uh, uh, sign a transaction, send it back to this person. Get this onion, pull back that layer by decrypting it, and then send it back over the Helium wireless network, that wireless network that you're a participant in in that local geography. And so we do this over and over again uh, through uh, these challenges, such that uh, these hotspots, so again, started with the Sable Otter, then it went to the original Indigo Beaver, and then Crowders or Goat, and so on and so forth. Uh, and they're either passing or failing these coverage challenges based on their ability to receive, or I guess specifically hear, the packet in wireless lingo uh, and then decrypt it and then respond back uh, over the network that yes, I've successfully received this. We also have participants called witnesses and you can see these lower down on the list in yellow. So things like proud Azure goat, uh, proper boysenberry koala. So they are there in the local network providing coverage and they happen to witness this challenge packet and sort of attest to its existence and that's valuable to the network as well. And so they report on this, they sign a transaction, they send it back over the blockchain. And so, uh, we, uh, I think I've got a stat on this later, but we've, uh, I think we've done about 4 million, 5 million challenges to date. And it's just quite remarkable. So we produce this network that is valuable to our end users because they get proof that it actually works. And then we reward these operators for things like completing proof of coverage challenges, being witnesses, issuing proof of coverage challenges, and then actually routing data. So uh, a little bit of uh, our progress. So we started uh, the testnet in July of 2019. We formally launched the Austin network in August of 2019. Since then, um, we're at over a thousand cities, which is pretty remarkable, primarily in the United States. Although <laughs> what has happened is people buy them in the US and then ship them to other countries in the world. And that's kind of been happening organically. Uh, that said, we're about to start selling into EMEA very, very quickly. Uh, we just started shipping to Canada uh, and that those sales have been going quite well. So we're in 50 US states plus a handful of territories and, and Canada. Uh, and like I said, the launch was August 1st, 2019. 
And so uh, if you go to network.helium.com, this is what you'll see uh, if you're zoomed in at the level that I was zoomed in at when I took this photo. But this is somewhat representational of the amount of coverage that we have in the United States. So you can see, you know, we're sort of clustered in the east there and on the west coast. Uh, we're starting to sort of build out coverage uh, a bit in the Midwest. And then in the south, we've got a uh, very good coverage, too, on, at least on the east side. Of the United States. And so, you know, everywhere you see these green dots, this is some number of hotspots that are providing coverage. P coverage for us, uh, we talk about in terms of supply. This means that a, an enterprise or developer, and we're starting to see thousands of developers join our platform, can actually take a development board that uses the LoRaWAN wireless protocol uh, and, you know, with a few lines of code, actually send data across this this peer to peer hey, Mark, and sort of sorry. people power. Oh, yeah. Sorry to cut you off. Uh, we, we got a hard stop and wanted to get in. Uh, just a brief uh, Q and A um, before we wrap up here. Sure. That's fine. That's fine. Yeah, uh, I'll uh, kill the slides and uh, I'll, I'll take some Q and A. Sorry for interrupting. Oh no, no, job. you're totally fine. Um, so yeah, so that was an awesome, awesome presentation. Um, thank you for that. Uh, looks like we've got a couple on the side here. Uh, so what are the next steps you're taking to bootstrap the demand side? Right, you kind of talked about the supply side. You built out this um, large group, you know, three thousand plus hotspots, but uh, kind of talk about the other side a little bit. Yeah, yeah. So so uh, internally, we talk about 2019 as a year of building out coverage. And then 2020, so coverage being the supply side. And then 2020 for us is the year of sort of building out the, the demand. So um, we're doing pretty much uh, every effort possible to sort of do this. We've got a full enterprise sort of sales team that's doing all sorts of enterprise sales things like outbound communications going after companies that are either already using LoRaWAN and building devices or, or that have expressed interest in doing that. Um, at the same time, we've got a full grassroots developer organization that's taking the sort of ground up approach and going after every developer they can find, every sort of meetup they can find, um, every group that's building hardware that we can find. And we're doing different things to sort of cater to both of these groups. So um, that's been working quite well uh, in the, um, in the, I'll give you some, uh, I guess some stats that I think I can share. I mean, in the last uh, four or five days alone, we've we've closed uh, 15 enterprise customers, right? People who are using the network um, and have every intention of building real products on it, in addition to onboarding um, hundreds of new developers to the platform to build devices. Awesome, yeah, that's interesting, but thanks for sharing. Uh, I know yeah. you probably, probably can't give names on those enterprise, but looks like we got a question uh, just about like what types of devices um, can these hotspots like send yeah. data to? Yeah, so on the enterprise names, by the way, so our, um, our PI marketing team is about to start just a fairly consistent blitz of putting names out there of actual companies with stories and, and really nice sort of narratives around why they're using Helium. Um, so we'll have that stuff starting to sort of trickle out in the next couple of weeks and it'll be very visible. Um, in, in terms of any devices, so, you know, the, the, the LoRaWAN wireless link, uh, which again, as I mentioned, is a standard that's sort of growing in acceptance and is used the world over, um, is made for long range, low power, sort of um, battery constrained devices. So I think uh, you know the high end would be anything sending data under five K bits a second, but generally people are sending a lot less than that. So I think like temperature sensors, location sensors, movement sensors, um, anything that can look at humidity, pressure, light, um, you know, as like a commercial product would be something like a, a dog tracker, right? Or a pet leash uh, sort of tracker, which we have um, two, two different companies building that sort of product, for example. So. Small data from small devices generally always fits. Mm -hmm. um, I'm not sure exactly what this means, but maybe you can make some sense of it. Uh, how how yeah. does the economics and the ROI co contrast with the uh, status quo for the demand side? Uh, I'm guessing the question from AJ, thank you, AJ, is um, how do you guys sort of reconcile the idea that you want to build a network that increases in value, but at the same time offer something to I mean, so so the way that the, we didn't get too too into this, but the Helium token, which is native to the Helium blockchain, um, uh, is one of actually two tokens that people deal with. There's the Helium token and then something called a data credit. And so we use a, a mechanism called um, Burn and Mint Equilibrium to ensure that um, as people start to use the network, uh, the Helium token, uh, we produce 5 million a month roughly um, on target. Um, does not, uh, there isn't too much inflation. So the, the data credits are used for transaction fees. So the transaction fee could be sending data to or from a device, could be adding a hotspot, could be sending from wallet to wallet. And so uh, the system that we're trying to build should eventually balance itself out over time as the sort of network value um, increases to sort of, um, I guess, be a, a, a lagging indicator of, of uh, network usage. I don't know if that answers your question, AJ. Um, feel free to email me if you want to discuss it more. Yeah, so I guess with that, um, we'll wrap up with what, what is the best way to stay in touch with yourself or 
uh, follow along with everything that's going on with Helium. Yeah, so I'm Mark, M-A-R-K at helium.com. Um, we are at chat.helium.com. We've got thousands of people in our uh, public Slack every day. Um, we're also on Telegram. There's a fake channel out there that says Helium Official. Don't join that one. There's another one called Helium. Um, actually, I think just today we flipped it over to being not uh, just um, um, announcements. So you can go chat in there. Um, and then uh, developer.helium.com is the best place for documentation on both the device side um, and the, the blockchain and the network side. Awesome. Well, with that, we'll, we'll call it a wrap. Thank you so much. Yeah, my pleasure. Thanks for having us.